Folks, welcome to Prep, Cook, Plate, and Repeat. This is a new series that you're gonna be seeing on YouTube and Instagram. We'll be posting weekly videos. Today, we're doing two types of tacos, family tacos. We're doing a al pastor taco, which is traditional chipotle peppers and pineapples with pork, and then we're doing a carne asada taco. This is great for Taco Tuesday with the family, bring the friends over, bring the family over. It's excellent. As you can see, we have an assortment of some nice serrano peppers. We have some beautiful avocados we picked. We have some really nice cilantro that we got from the market. Some nice fresh Roma tomatoes. We're gonna do some nice garnish with some nice pork rinds. We have some beautiful radishes that we just washed and we got them from the market, beautiful stuff. Don't forget your olive oil. We got some citrus with some limes and some um, tangerine oranges for our al pastor. We're gonna make a nice pico de gallo and we're gonna make a guacamole. Pico de gallo is an ancient condiment from Mexico. It translates pico is the beak, gallo is the rooster, so beak of the rooster. And then we're also gonna make a traditional condiment that's known through every region of Mexico, guacamole. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna season our meat. This is just a typical London broil cut. You can find this in any regular supermarket. It's about $3 a pound. It's a cheap cut, but if you season it correctly, it takes in all the seasoning and it's a wonderful, wonderful cut of meat. If you cook it to medium rare, it's great for tacos. So we're gonna break this thing down. We're gonna thinly slice this. First we wanna do is, as you can see here, there's a huge vein going down the middle. You wanna cut through that and get that out of there because that won't cook down. First thing, cut that in half, just like that. Remove this piece, right? Okay. Okay. Next thing you want to do, you want to you want to look at the meat and watch how it runs. So you want to cut across the grain, always. So find it. So it's running that way, so we're gonna cut this way. So take a nice sharp knife and begin slicing thin slices of meat, just like that. Now the reason we slice it so thin is that it won't overcook on you quickly. You just need to be quick when you're, when you're cooking it. And then also it takes in any flavor you season it with. When there's smaller cuts of, you penetrate the this flesh more. All right, we're gonna put that into our mixing bowl, just like this. The other half, just look for any fat, any, any skin here that you need to remove. Just be careful doing this, you can't cut yourself. Just like that, okay. All right. All right, now that you cut your meat, you thinly slice, the next thing, important thing to do is to season it. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna grab some salt, about two decent sized pinches of salt, right? About one pinch of pepper, just like that. And then we're gonna do about a teaspoon of ground cumin. We're gonna do a teaspoon of chili powder. Dark or light is fine, whatever you have in your pantry is okay. Next thing you want to do important part is get yourself a high quality oil, nothing cheap because oil penetrates and you're going to be tasting that heavily. So get yourself a decent oil, Spaniard oil, Greek oil, Italian oil is fine, extra virgin is fine as well. We're going to put about two tablespoons of oil in here. All right, I'm going to pick some fresh cilantro that we got, cilantro leaves, let's take them. Bunch them up like this and just give it a nice rough chop. One time across, throw that in there. All right? And then next, we're gonna do some garlic, fresh garlic. We're gonna take a garlic clove, crush it with your hand. We're gonna take two, three pieces of garlic. Let's peel these off. right off. Alright, one more. Okay. 
discard any trash. The next thing you want to do is you want to take the end part of your knife, take the garlic, and smash it. All the garlic, just like that, and smash it. Next thing we want to do is we want to create a paste like. So what we do is salt breaks down any enzymes and anything. We're gonna add a pinch, a good pinch of salt to our garlic, and we're gonna start mincing. This is probably gonna take a good minute or so. You really wanna mince, mince till it becomes a paste. Just like that. Once you got it into small pieces, you're gonna take your knife, and you're gonna run it just like that. You wanna hear that noise. You wanna hear it smushing against the cutting board. It's becoming a paste. Give it another good chop. Again, smush it down. That's the noise you wanna hear. It's breaking it down, the salt's penetrating it. in there all right next thing is the fun part get in there with your hands and really mix in that seasoning that meat excuse my sweat it's hot in here really mix that seasoning up into the meat wonderful it smells fantastic beautiful perfume from that garlic and that's what you want right there we're gonna let that sit until we prep our other items. All right, next part, one of my favorite tacos is al pastor taco. Al pastor is a street style, um, just like jerk chicken in Jamaica and all these other places, al pastor is a street style of tacos. Consists of, the protein is meat, it could be pork, it could be chicken, whatever you like, you can really season it to that. Today we're doing the original, we use some nice, thin, Pork tops, I got some fat on them, uh, boneless. So what we're gonna do first thing, same process as we did with the meat, and thinly slice this pork. Really thinly slice it. All right, we're gonna cut up roughly about five chops here. They're about half a pound each, if that. Another thing too, anytime you're dealing with pork, always want to rinse out your pork. Clean it with water and clean it with some vinegar. Alrighty, now all our pork is chopped up, throw it back in here. Perfect. I'm going to discard our cutting board, I'm going to wash our hands real quick. Next thing is we got to season our al pastor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take four tablespoons of some chopped Pineapples, you can find these in the store. Today we use some dull. Anything is fine, you wanna use fresh pineapple, it's fine. You also wanna take some of that excess juice at the bottom, because that is really what's gonna flavor our pork. Okay, great. Chipotle peppers, you can find these canned, you can find these dry, I prefer canned, because they come in the sauce already, it's really good. Um, depending on how hot you like the heat, how spicy you want this, you can go two peppers, three peppers, four peppers, Five peppers for excess heat. We're gonna roll with four peppers today. I'm gonna give it a little kick. And take your knife and you're just gonna chop these really fine. Break it down. All right, Let's scoop that back into there, into our bowl. Wonderful. Now that's in there. We're gonna take some cilantro like we did last time. I'm just gonna dice that up. We'll throw that right in there. Okay. Next, we're gonna season with some salt. Two pinches. 
I'm going to do a small pinch of pepper. Just like that. Touch of olive oil. There you go. Then we're going to cut an orange. Watch out for any seeds in there. Grab yourself a sieve or a strainer so you can catch any excess pits coming out. There you go. Use one whole orange, tangerine, navel orange, whatever you can find in your local store. Great, that's there. Discard that. And then we're going to take the juice of one whole lime. The lime's a little tough to loosen it up. Take it and roll it on your counter. That's how you break up the membranes inside the flesh to release that wonderful juice. Use a knife, cut it in half, squeeze one half and the other half. Just like that. That's beautiful. Alrighty. Discard. Fun part, get in there with your hands and start to mix everything up. Real nice. It smells amazing, those chipotles, everything fresh. Wonderful. Let that sit on the side for about 15, 20 minutes. You can do this a couple hours in advance to really intensify the flavor and the seasoning. So now we got both our meats seasoned and sitting on the side and marinating. We're gonna make the two condiments. First we're gonna do our guacamole. You can do guacamole in a bowl, you can smash it by hand with a fork. If you have a mortar and pestle, I encourage using it. So we're gonna break the guacamole now. So grab yourself three avocados. This is real, this is this part you need to be careful. People call this avocado hand, they can cut themselves. Take the avocado instead of putting it in your hand, put it on the ground here. On the cutting board, move it around, just like that, away from your hand, and that's it. Instead of the traditional doing this way, and you have a good chance of cutting yourself, just put it on your cutting board. Same thing, the, take your knife, insert it into the pit, twist, and it'll come right out. Just like that. Next thing, the spoon. Spoon right into the avocado, just like that. Scoop it out and right into your mortar pestle or your bowl. Make sure to scrape all the flesh, get all that beautiful greenness right out of there. Alrighty, that's great. Now with your mortar and pestle or fork, whatever you have at home, just start to bang the avocado. Now, the consistency is totally up to you. The more you smush it, the more it's gonna be pureed. If you want more of a chunky, you can just leave it where it is right now with a couple of bangs, and that's it. Once you find the consistency you like, you can stop. Just gonna move all this from the side. Make a little well here in the middle so we can start putting our other toppings that are going to go inside. All the ingredients. All right. First thing is tomatoes. All right. Take the tomato, core it, like that. Slice the tomato in half. Take your tomato. Two lines across, three lines the other way, and then there you go. You want about a medium dice on your tomatoes. Same thing with the other half. The spoon, start to mix that up. Oops. Next, we're going to take a red onion, 
we're going to use not the whole red onion, maybe a quarter of it. Remove any excess skin. Cut this one in half. Okay, we're gonna make some insertions. Same way we cut the tomato, same way we'll cut this. Alright, so we got the onions in there, we got tomatoes in there. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some citrus. Again, on limes, one and a half, we do one whole line. Next we're gonna do two salt. It's about it's about a teaspoon full. Next we're gonna do half a teaspoon of pepper. Just like that. And we're gonna mix that up real nice. that want to be vibrant, nice in color. Mix that up. And our final ingredient, the most important, is the cilantro. You can put as much cilantro as you like. I think a piece about that big, probably quarter, for fourth of the uh, entire cilantro is fine. Get that right in there. Beautiful. Mix that up. It smells amazing. And give it a taste test after you're done. Always taste for salt, pepper, citrus, whatever you like. Mmm. That's some good stuff. To the peak of the guile. Let's grab a bowl. We're gonna grab some tomatoes. Two tomatoes. We're gonna small dice these tomatoes. And make sure make sure you get yourself a nice under a little underripe tomato. You don't want it too firm because it won't be hard to chew. It, it's not really at its full potential. And it's a little underripe right there. That's when it's at its full potential. Next, Spanish onion, white onion will do. Any sort of white onion, it's fine. Cut it in half. Let's peel the skin off. If you cut the onion fast enough, it won't make you cry, alright? About a quarter of onion you throw in here. Next, we're gonna pump this baby with some heat. These are serrano peppers. They are hotter on the Scoville units than regular habaneros. Excuse me, regular jalapenos. Probably one of these bad boys is equivalent to two jalapenos. So this stuff is hot. It is totally up to you if you want to keep the seeds in there or take them out. Obviously, more seeds in there, it's going to be a hotter pico de gallo. So for us, we're going to take out some of these seeds. Take our pepper, cut small slivers and then cut across. It's the same thing, we are small dicing this. We're gonna do one half of a line. Finish it with some more cilantro. Throw that right in there. Good portion of salt. Good pinch of salt in there. Some pepper. Some olive oil. About two tablespoons of olive oil in here. A spoon. It makes all that goodness. It smells amazing. Smell that you get that serrano right away in your face. Get that little taste test. Mm. 
very, very fresh elementary taco. Great stuff. All right, once you see a little smoking from your pan, that's when you take your meat and put it right in there. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear that sear right away. If you don't hear the sear, the pan isn't ready. You smell the powder, the chipotle, the chili powder right away once it hits that flame. And cook it for about a minute. And once you see it's starting to cook out, cook it right over. That's what you want right there. The heatiness. Beautiful right there. That's just all done. Alright, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cook the al pastor tacos. I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of oil in here now. And which of that bad boy really heats up hot. Put your pork right in. Very important to cook your pork in batches. You don't want to overcrowd the pan too much because it will end up happening. You'll steam or boil your pork instead of giving it a nice sear. This is going to take about seven minutes to really cook. All right, now now that we have everything ready, our meats are ready, our condiments are ready. We got the guacamole, we got the pico de gallo, the tortillas were the last thing to do. You can heat up these tortillas directly on your host on your. Stove top, open flame, or you can put them in the oven for a few minutes, whichever you like. So, the fun part, for the kids, for the friends, when they come over, you have a taco party. As you can see, you have all your meats, you got your condiments ready, you build your tacos. You can do whichever way you like. You wanna grab some pork, you wanna grab some steak, we'll grab some steak. The steak looks beautiful, look at that. Beautiful, juicy steak, tender, tastes good. You can build it any way you like. You can put some pico de gallo on top, you put, could put some guacamole here, then we put some cotija cheese. You can find cotija cheese in any pretty much supermarket, sold everywhere now. And there you go, that's beautiful. You can always top these off, however you like. Some guacamole. Some pico. Again, this is totally, totally up to you how you want to dress your taco. The world is your oyster. One last little touch that we will do, traditional, is some radishes. Take your radish, thinly slice, just like that. Put it right on top, just like that. Radishes, now it's coming together. Now you can see it, beautiful. And then final touch, Freshness, a little cilantro. You don't have to chop this one. You can literally tear it with your hands and put it right on top and put the finishing touches. We got some limes here. Take your lime, squeeze around right top. There you go, beautiful. And that's Taco Tuesday night with the kids, with the family, with the friends, whoever you want to bring over. You can make a lot of this stuff in advance. You can make your pico de gallo in advance. You can make a guacamole a few hours ahead. You can do the pico a day before. Season your meats up to hours before. It's a fun, fun overall activity. Thank you for tuning in this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook and our YouTube channel. We'll see you next week. Thank you.